Six birds in a trench coat, building a zoo. And welcome to the final tour of Reptopia. We will be starting the tour at the official tour bus. Let's just plop ourselves down over here with all the other tourists and go into the zoo. So right here at the entrance, there's a bit of music. We've got our ATMs. So we scan our tickets that we got before getting on the bus. Let's see, where do we want to go? Playground, insect gardens, okay. Let's just go inside. Hello, security guard. Why are you always right there? So first, we walk under this place. Go up to the information desk. Get our free map, our feeding schedule, and everything. Oh, wait, backstage tours? Yeah, let's do that. We come out from under this roof here. Where do we want to go? Uh, that's a staff area. I wonder what's down there. Pretty sure we aren't supposed to be going in here, but... Oh well, let's do it anyway. There's a closet. Someone brought a present to work. Some tools. Someone is fixing something. More tools. Science. Oh, that's interesting. Science people have a sink and, and some very sciencey looking things here. Uh, we should probably leave before someone sees us in here, except for that guy who already saw us and didn't care. We were never in there. No. Here we have some education. But the habitat, statistical facts, and, and, and tortoises. Come on over there, it's pointing at them. And when we get out here, we can see just how big and open it actually is. Garials. Cool. I wonder if that's what we can see in here. Underwater viewing. I can see a gharial. Not very well, but maybe if I pop through the glass, I can. And our fish feeding thing. Okay, we should probably not be swimming. So let's go. Oh, why? Why is that animal in a box? Okay, excuse me for a second. I'm gonna have to help you. Okay. Some more education over there, and right next to the tortoises, we have the Growling Grotto. Complete with signs here where you can see just what animals will be down there. Now, if you don't like snakes, you know you should not go in here. But I promise you, there are no spiders. So we walk in here, and uh, see over this way we have a desert vibe going and uh, people could keep their faces out of mine over here more of a rainforest vibe got a little area here with a bench and a height measuring station and I put the signs up above the exhibits that's the first time I've done that I really think it turned out very nice. Because I've seen it done in actual zoos. A bit more education over here. And now we're in the desert area where even the soundscape is different. I put up speakers as well. Speakers as well. So I have some crickets and desert at night speakers over here diamondback rattlesnake and we have some adders over here okay let's leave the cave let's check out the staff area hmm so if a keeper is going in there now they know who they will meet I really do like using these sort of more worn eh, 
more worn out doors for the backstage area because they're not what you would want guests to see unless it's a part of a theming. And then we have our little food preparation station, complete with a food preparation station sign. We have some lettuce and carrots, as well as a big chunk of meat right there. Some eggs. You know, the sink and the paper towels. I think, uh, I think we should probably go back now. So let's go up on top of the exhibition area. Wow. Happily chomping away on their fish. Big guy out there swimming towards the uh, cauliflower ball. Nice big tree under the sky here. The and I have quite a few roaming educators. The education uh, animal talk stations for some reason didn't want to pick up on the animals, so I got rid of most of them. Here we have our Komodo dragons. Their little round watering hole and something in the back. What is that? Why do the babies live in the trees? So I did the text here the way I usually do text, just a bunch of lines, but uh, I think the images tell the story. Because if you read the Zoopedia, you will see that the adult Komodos tend to eat their children if the children do not reside in trees. So they do. And I am so happy with how this whole system worked out because the they do spend some time on the ground, but it's amazing how much time the babies actually end up spending up on these platforms with their food up there, their enrichment items. The only thing they actually need to go down for is, oh, hi. Oh, wow, all of you proving my point up here. Okay, let's go back. Run, run, run. Don't want to get eaten. Whoa, I just hit the space bar like I was trying to jump there. This is not the game where that happens. Have this little photo station over here. Um, kids can ride Mr. Shally. And yes, we do mean kids of all ages. You, too, can sit on the tortoise statue. Excuse me. Next to the Komodos, we have the Nile Monitor. So since these are Nile Monitors, they live near a river, I, well, I gave them a river. And again, popped in some big trees over here, underneath the glass. We have a sign here telling us, oh, we have both the gift shop and crocodile this way. And that's the only donation bin I have because if I didn't have one, the game kept telling me that I didn't have one. And I got really tired of being told that. Put in a little sleeping area over here. These are confident animals, so they don't care if people watch them sleep. Also, I turned off stress, but that's another matter. Should we go into the gift shop? Let's just pop in here. A bit of music in the gift store as well. Some super happy people selling things. And we have all of these things you can buy plates and buckets and bottles and presents and things I don't really know what are. These are obviously pens and pen holders. Last peek at the Nile Monitor habitat. One over there eating and getting more food immediately. Wow. Luxury lizards. And here we have the dwarf caimans. Oh wow, they had a lot of babies. And on the other side of this path right here, we have the other caiman, the spectacled caiman. Yeah, I hit a food dish under the rocks over there so that they would come all the way up here to eat. 
And I'm really happy with these that are normally incredibly ugly feeding stations, but you can actually just cover them like that with logs. These two animals actually live in the same area, but the area covers both more wooded jungle-like habitats like this and some slightly more arid savanna-like areas, which I tried mimicking over here. Using a lot of dry grasses. And we have their water. Nah! <laughs> look at the baby. Yeah, we're jumping the fence because these guys are adorable. You look like a puppy. Yay! A little crock of puppy. <laughs> okay, we should get back out before the parents. I'm not going to hit the space button to jump. Right here we have the alligators. And this is... This is the f my favorite of all of the habitats in this zoo, the swamp area with the fog coming off the water and, the, and those mossy looking trees and the it's completely overgrown and just gorgeous. Of course, these animals are also the biggest idiots in the game. They needed a bridge from water to water in order to be able to get anywhere. Let's just move in here. We got the usual assortments of shovels and buckets, and security guards going through the walls. That's normal. We have this little area, which tells us whether or not the outer gate is open, which it is right now. That one is glowing, and you can see the picture. Put up an airlock here so that you can safely go in here and not have them follow you out to where the guests are. Okie dokie, you look angry. So let's stay out here on the path. We are running. We were never in the gator habitat. And I put in a little bridge here. Now this is the in-game banister, which this is definitely my favorite. I love using this rope thing and then just adding wood pieces like that usually add a lot more wood pieces, but I think on this bridge here, it just, it just, I don't know, just felt right. And of course added this thing, because people, idiots will idiot. And if we just turn around here, we can look out the window. at the outside habitat. Standing over here looking at the... Whoa, that guy's big. They have a more beachy looking habitat with a lot of sand and even the sound. Give them waves crashing with your soundscape. Let's get something to eat before we go outside. No, I don't need more souvenirs. We have the menu. I think I'll have the tortoise weenie. So we go in here and we order our food and then so we can sit up here. And have this pretty okay now I'm standing at some lady's table, but this is a really nice view. You can see just how tall the building actually is. Such a big, big crocodile. Actually, the view from up here is, is, is I didn't even plan how flipping good it is. Or we can just jump this fence like psychopaths. And we can sit down here. Okay, so I think the animals were just fed, which is why nobody's swimming underneath here, but they do. Come on, is no one going to swim under here? Well, I've seen them do it, okay? It works. So now we've seen everything inside. Let us head towards... Oops, low branch. Let's just head towards the exit and see what's outside. So if we look at the signs here, we have 
There's an insect garden over that way, and that fountain makes so much sense. I think we're gonna go the other way because I don't like butterflies, so if I can stay away from them a bit longer, that will be better. Here we have a children's education station. Whose foot is it? Whose noise is it? And I use the same custom billboard that I use in a tiny version along the habitats. I think it works surprisingly well in both sizes. And if that is not enough to entertain your children, you can send them in here. And here we have another group of custom billboards with uh, habitat type information on them. I made those for all the animals as well. And there we have the small version of the kids sign. And you can hear the waves. So let's keep going this way. In fact, let's speed up a little bit. Yet another staff area, because I decided that one habitat gate per habitat was not enough. Because these are the kinds of animals that you, um, that you want security measures for. So the idea is that keepers could throw some food in there and like ring the dinner bell, and then all the animals would come out here, they could shut that gate, and then they could clean the inside area. So the whole there can be only one gate limitation is uh, probably necessary for in-game programming, but it's not exactly a touch of realism. And here we have the outdoors gator habitat. Which again, I just love. Look at the, the, the wall in the back there with all of that ivy. It took such a long time, but it's totally worth it. What are you eating? Invisible food. Here we have the habitat sign for the alligator. With that picture, which is what I think I pretty successfully emulated in there, actually. Whee. So let's run past this. Oh, wait, what? Stav road. Delivery vehicles. Oh, delivery only. Nope. Okay, we're going to go in here. This is wrong. This is illegal. I don't care. Quarantine area. So this is where the animals go when they're sick. Oh, and then there's a gate so they can also go inside the building. That's cool. And this is where they sort all their trash. I bet they have a lot of trash here. What's in the organic waste pile? Oh, that's poop. Ew. Okay, we should leave. We should leave before they see us. Wow, this uh, this place needs uh, some repaving. We are running. We've never been anywhere we're not supposed to be. So let's start by going down here to this very large open green area. Yet another waterfall, and a little place to sit, and look, <laughs> there he is, there they are. Why are you guys always on top of each other? Weird croctopus. Yes, I wasn't sure if these guys would do deep diving. They don't have it as an en enrichment need, but, but they do dive. Yay, so this whole thing, this whole thing actually works. Look at that. Oh yes. And they use the same color inside and outside which kind of makes it feel like you're in the water with them. Very happy with this. Let's go back upstairs. We go over here. More education. And we can look at the spectacle caimans in here with their more grasslandy habitat. Look at that. And here we have a larger playground. A wisteria wall. I may have gone slightly overboard. Nah, one cannot have too many flowers. Got some more vending machines and tables in here. 
more ATMs, more vending machines. And here we have the dwarf came and the smallest, cutest puppy lizard of them all. Look at that. Let's just press our noses up against the glass. Also has roots and things, but these orchid things growing here and all of the different uh, bright type of types of plants. It's more of a mangrove, tropical feel here. Insect gardens and exit this way. Okay, let's do that. Wait, who's here? Nile monitor. So this is the outside area of the Nile. Oh, that is a very large pool. Yeah, see this right here, this was the most difficult place to get an outside whoop. The most difficult place to get an outside habitat gate because you kind of had to put it here. I haven't walked through it like a person. You can see the same security thing, but with the picture of this specific. Yeah, so then you have to go in here and walk across this plank bridge, which doesn't exactly feel safe, especially because it's bumpy as fuck. But... I do think that these underwater flower beds are really cool. Just wanted to show them with those off. Let's hurry. Run, 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 run. Ow, 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 Bumpy. Wait, why am I a kid? There we go. So we are at the Nile. We're in Africa now. Moving on. That's the first time I've seen Gas take an actual group photo. Wee! That was fun. Don't know if you remember, but the Komodos and the Nile monitors were next to each other inside, and this, this is a closer peek into the baby area. You can see one up there. There's one down here getting water, and that guy running back up again as soon as he's had his fill of the sippity sippies. I really do think this little extra viewing window in the back turned out so cool. So here we have another kind of grasslands looking habitat that's even more arid, more deserty. Yes, I wish I'd put more dead grass and less green grass in here. Wow, you guys can actually run. You look kind of weird, do I? Let's get off the fence. And now we are entering the butterfly garden. I haven't walked through these in, in explore cam mode. These are not real butterflies. Just remember that. Do not get freaked out. I'm going to show you this from above afterwards as well. But so what I was trying to do in this area, let me just show you the... Uh, little education station for all the butterflies. I wanted to make it seem like this was just an outdoors area for, for wild insects, so I put absolutely zero nets or anything up. And I tried placing the exhibits at all of these different angles so that, uh, okay, we definitely need a gardener over here, so that it doesn't feel like you're, you're walking through an exhibit but that these houses and the nectar feeders and all of that is just, you know, it's just part of the garden as a whole. So I put down paths in as many different angles as I could. And of course the ones going through the actual exhibits have to be straight. So I made sure some of the others are also completely straight, but some are kind of more wavy shaped. See how the garden fits into the nature in general here. And these lamps, don't know how few how much you notice, but they are everywhere, just hidden in the leaves, and I actually kind of wonder how this place would look at night. So let's just pop into free look mode. And I'll show you the garden here from above. Flying over it like that. 
paths going in different directions. I made sure to connect the paths as close to the end of um, the exhibits so that it feels more more like one winding path. And then go back out here where we hide in these bushes just so we can see what this place looks like at night. Okay, other people had the same idea. Butterfly gardens at dusk are really pretty. The vending machine area. The lighting works really well over here too, I think. I really like that. Let's go inside. Yeah. That works too. That's a little bit blinding. Kind of dark over here. Oh, this is a nice cozy corner. Imagine sitting here and just... That guy looks happy. Okay, it looks like I put a spotlight on those trees. I'm surprised how well this works. Considering I just kind of plopped down the lamps. Okay, yes, the difference between this green jungle area and the desert area is so much more distinct when it's dark. Look at that. Okay, I love this. This cave should definitely be viewed when it's night outside. And that is it. The end of the Reptopia limited series. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll be back for our next adventure. Don't forget to check back in if you want to find out what that is. Bye!